Gearworks, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing two handheld electric air dusters. Now I'm kind of late to this party, people have been talking about these for a while now, but I had some extra Amazon US vouchers that I needed to spend, so I thought I'd buy a couple from Amazon US and try them out. Now at the moment for dusting out PCs I use a proper air compressor, um, which is kind of overkill for most PC dusting, um, but it's what I have. Um, my one is archaic though and in desperate need of repair. Um, so it'd be, it'll be very interesting to see if either of these guys can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an actual air compressor. Now, this is not to say that one of these things can replace an air compressor, because an air compressor can do all kinds of other useful things, you know, like inflating the tires on a car and such like. However, um, if you just want to blow out laptops and desktop computers, it's also massive overkill, and one of these guys should be much more suited for the job. These are probably also these are a lot more convenient and space effective as well. So I bought two of them. I've got here this one is the DataVac, uh, which is the one that everyone says is the one to get, um, but also one of the more expensive models. And then I bought a cheaper one, which is this um, AT Atenege. I bought this cheaper one that says it's an AC air duster. It suddenly occurred to me that this might be 120 volts. Uh, let's hope it can do both, otherwise this might be a very short test. Uh-oh, I didn't think of that. So the box for this one is um, not very impressive if I'm honest, but on the flip side I'm not super fussed about unimpressive packaging. If it does the job I don't really care what the box looks like, and I'd rather have hassle-free packaging. Oh, balls. It's got an American plug on it. I can't believe I didn't think of this when I bought it. Oh, no. It is 120 volts. Cannot believe I didn't think of this. I'm so used to computers and laptops and stuff being 120 to 250 volts that it didn't occur to me that it wouldn't work on my 240 volt main system. Um, okay, let's just carry on getting some first impressions, and I will solve this in a moment. Wow, okay, so this thing has got metal housing, which is very impressive. Um, it's quite heavy. It's got a decently long cord on it, by the looks of things, with one of these weird-looking American plugs. It is up to 480 watts which is quite impressive. So that should be pretty good. Oh, and it just has a clicker on it. Very well. I wouldn't say this thing is particularly ergonomic, if I'm honest. Like, that button is really clunky and awful to get to. Um, the, the design is not particularly impressive. However, if it's got a massive heckin' blower in it and just throws out air really fast, that's kind of what matters, really, I guess. Um, yeah, not super impressed with the presentation of this thing. Uh, if it do if it performs, then sure thing. Um, but yeah, ergonomics are awful. This is, this it feels clunky. It's got a nice big handle, I guess, but I don't know. Fine, okay, okay. Let's put this to one side and have a look at the other one. Now this one was half the price and is 260 watts, so this one theoretically is likely to be significantly weaker, but also it's significantly cheaper. Um, what I was more interested in, like I didn't look for a specific this one was recommended model, however there were several that were in this hairdryer style. So I thought, let's get a hairdryer style one and see how we do. Right, yeah, this is also 120 volts. I'm an idiot. Um, okay, however, uh, the box is a lot nicer for this. The product is plastic, so obviously scratchy plastic, but with the with the hairdryer pistol style grip, um, it's a lot more pleasant to pick up and, and handle. It's got a two-speed setting on it, which says it's a two-gear setting. Um, I'm interested to know whether that's, well, yeah, no, I'd, I'd imagine that's just two speed. 
I suspect this is basically just a big hairdryer without the heating element in it. Uh, it comes with some extra filters, which is nice. And the nozzles have a much more convenient fitment to them with a better locking mechanism. That's a lot nicer to use. So yeah, hairdryer, cool. This one feels a lot more precise, which could be good for getting into nooks and crannies in a PC, which is what I'm interested in. Cool. Right. I'll see you guys when I come up with a solution to this 120 volt problem. Okay, now we have a transformer. So this transformer is a Bronson Plus Plus step up, step down transformer that I just got from Amazon. It's rated for 500 watts, so it should be able to handle both of these blowers. So we'll start with the um, uh, Atenge, or however you pronounce it, the, the TAD08, the TAD08. This has got 260 to 500 watts written on the side of it. I'm under the impression that it's 260 watts, but I've plugged an energy meter in line with the transformer so we can verify that. We might see some transformer losses in there as well, but it should be a pretty good estimate as to what kind of power these things actually draw. So I shall plug this in and we'll give it a whirl. So I've put, I've put this nozzle on here because that looked like a sensible nozzle for dusting with. Um, a big wide nozzle isn't going to be very helpful because you need a jet to actually push dust out of the way. So um, uh, let's just give this a quick spin. We'll try it on the low and then the high. Obvious noise warnings afoot. Uh, I may duck the volume if I have to. Here we go. Cool. That certainly kicks out a lot of air. This is the lower power one, remember, and that was making a gale. That's about the kind of output that I expect from an air compressor. But obviously, because of the spool up, it doesn't have that sudden it doesn't have that sudden smack of air which dislodges dust. One of the good things about an air compressor is because you've got that that stored energy there, when you push the button, there is a wall of air that goes bang and actually knocks dust loose, which is why you use a compressor or canned air in short blasts. You blast it clear. Whereas this, you kind of turn it on, but then I suppose you can turn it on and then wave it around, I guess. Um, that pulled 400 watts, so uh, it ain't 260 watts, so I can tell you that much. Let's see what the sustain was on the low power. And the sustained power was 275. Looks like this transformer has a quiescent of about 5 watts, so um, allowing for losses, let's knock about 10 or 15 watts out of that, and that's where they're getting the 260 from. What about the second speed setting? Wow. Okay, the second speed was 415 sustained, and we've got a peak of 487 uh, on spool up. So yeah, this thing is this thing is clocking 400 to 500 watts kind of thing. I don't know that 260 watts. Are, you know that is. Um, on the low speed, yeah, but on the high speed, this thing really belts it out. Um, so yeah, that's powerful enough. Um, easily is going to go toe to toe with the data vac in terms of just raw power. Uh, I thought this was going to be a lower power thing, but it really isn't. Um, cool, that seems pretty impressive. Let's try the data vac. So the data vac, I've put a nozzle on here. It's got a nozzle that goes down to a similar size to the one that I've got on the other one, but. It's got an extra hole in it. I don't know if that's pressure relief, just so because that would give it too much pressure. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat and just put this nozzle on here, like that. There we go. And let's see how this one fares. So there's only one speed for this. There's a go button, and that's it. Here we go. Cool. That one's savage. That's got a quicker spool up speed on it. That definitely started blowing. That came up to speed much faster. It was a lot more violent in getting going. It does feel like it's outputting more, but this is very subjective. I'm just putting my hand like there kind of thing and just going, oh yes, that's that's a lot of blowing. This is definitely noisier. Like volume wise, they're both loud, but this one is a much more harder on the ears kind of thing. 
And this one was about 420 sustained with a peak of 497 indicated. So, um, so yeah, this one, um, the sustained power is actually slightly lower than this guy uh, on high speed. Not by much, but just by a little bit. But the peak is higher. This one spikes up to a higher peak, which is probably that quicker spool up on it. So this one's obviously got a, a more savage motor in it that winds up faster. But the actual peak output looks like it's probably very similar. Um, so, yeah. What I'm going to do now, in order to actually test these properly, I'm going to spend a couple of week, well, a couple of days, a week or so, blowing stuff out with them, basically. And I will tell you what my findings are. So I've been using these two guys for a couple of weeks now. Um, I'm hoping I've still got all the footage for this put together. Um, and I've got to say, I'm 100% sold on these electric dusters as a product. Um, so I've got a couple of things of note in terms of just the concept of these and these two products specifically that I want to put across. But firstly, I need to point out what is my objective in this video? Was it to review the specifically the data vac and specifically the whatever this one was um, or not and the answer to that is I'm not really recommending any single particular one because I think what I've discovered after looking at both of these is I think for the broadly speaking they're all a much of a muchness um, certainly for my use case anyway the only test that I didn't do which uh, I regret not being able to was um, I actually wanted to test just blowing up an inflatable with one of these to see if I could do a very rough as guts test for static pressure. Um, so, but at any rate, I'll talk about my findings. So, firstly, um, this uh, this whatever brand this one was, um, which I'll call the Tad 08 because that's the model number it says on the side. Um, this was just as good as the DataVac. In short. It was half the price and it is just as good. If anything, I actually prefer this one because the pistol grip style of it is much more ergonomic to me. It's got a two-speed switch on it, which means if I want to be nice and gentle on like a laptop, I can put it on the lower speed. And if I've got a big desktop computer where I just need to just uh, mercilessly blow everything out, you can put it on full speed. Um, and um, as I say, because of the pistol grip and the way it points, it was just so much easier to aim and fire accurately with this thing. Um, in addition, it's just a bit more easier to manage as well. The filter on the back, because it does have a dust filter, which does need to be cleaned out with not a huge amount of use. Oh, how does that come off again? With not a huge amount of use, there's a noticeable dust buildup on the back. But that ring comes off. And that guy comes out, and it actually came with some spares of these, but you could easily you could easily wash that in the sink to get the dust off. This one, as you can see, has got a noticeable mark on it. The the data vac that's got proper grossness going on, but this you can kind of pull that out there and wash it, I guess. But it's um how how easily does that go back in? Now oh, that's that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Actually, I thought that would be a bit harder to put back in, but. Oh, that's quite manageable. Yeah, that, that's not so bad, actually. Um, but again, this one I found much more ergonomic. And so having, you know, pointed out the advantage of this, by comparison, the DataVac, I, I don't like the industrial design of this at all. I think it's quite awful, if I'm brutally honest. Considering this thing is drastically more expensive than the rest, it is just really poorly designed. Um, you know, my colleague Caradog... Um, when I'm talking to him about it, he said it almost looks like they've tried to fashion this on a miniaturized vacuum cleaner. 
um, such as, you know, like a Henry Hoover, that they've then tried to shrink down into something that then blows instead of sucks. And so then they just stuck a handle on it. But also, like, you know, just the afterthought of putting the power button there, you're just like, what were you thinking, man? It just, it, like, there's no indication of whether it's on or off until you plug it in. And, you know, the actual switch is um, when you... The, the on position of the switch feels like it's the off position mechanically as well. I have a feeling that this is a um, a push to break rather than a push to make, if that makes any sense. So just, yeah, the industrial design of it is quite awful, um, to be honest. But apparently the this guy performs better with the wider nozzle on. And I can believe that, but that also meant that it wasn't particularly accurate if I wanted to use use it on, say, a laptop or something like that. Whereas this guy, with the much longer nozzle, it was much easier to direct this into nooks and crannies and into heat sinks and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. And likewise, if I wanted the wide nozzle on this, then I'd just remove the nozzle. And now we have a wide nozzle and you could just blast with this. So, yeah, design-wise, I really don't rate the data vac at all. So, um, as I say, in terms of performance, what this tells me is that... If the wattage is the same, I think it's reasonable to assume that the performance will be more or less the same. And for that reason, I'm not going to recommend or disparage any model in particular of these. I'm merely just going to say electric dusters of around, you know, the 500, you know, four or 500 watts are really good. And I strongly recommend buying one. You know, I, I, I did a few times, I did force myself to not pick these up and go for my air compressor instead. And my air compressor just felt so inadequate by comparison. It does have that instant blast of the of the compressor um, trigger, which is good if you've got something that's difficult to shift because you can get that immediate hit of air exactly when you need it, whereas both of these have got a spool-up time. So, you know, obviously, if you want to shift something, you have to sort of wave it around in front to actually get some buffeting air instead of a steadily increasing stream that might not actually shift dust. Um, however, the fact that these are, a co once they're up to speed, they are just a constant stream of air that um, only an enormous compressor would be able to keep up with. So in terms of actual usefulness, these are actually so much more practical for just dusting out a computer. Now, of course, an air compressor has additional utility in that you can put other fittings on it for inflating tires and inflatables and things like that. Or you could run air tools from, a, from an air compressor. So um, an air compressor has its own advantages. Um, but I would certainly recommend one of these because you can get the cheap one and this one will be fine. I think this is a great purchase for a workshop. If I discovered that this one was really bad and... You, and I was, and the data vac was a, a must. That would be a, a harder sell because at a hundred, you know, at about a hundred, hundred twenty dollars or whatever I paid for it, it's a tough sell if I'm honest. Um, but you know, this guy at like forty five dollars, bargain in my opinion. And over in the UK, there are some other brands um, which have, uh, you know, sort of a, a cross between these. It's not quite a pistol grip, but it's not quite this monstrosity. Uh, and apparently those are very good as well, I'm told. And I've no reason to disbelieve those based on my experience with these. Um, so the last thing I'm going to do, just as an interest thing, is I'm going to take this one apart and just have a look at what's inside. I don't think it's going to be very exciting, but in a video that's um, about things that blow, um, I guess it would be rude not to at least just take some covers off and see if there's anything interesting in there. So uh, yeah, let's um, let's open this guy up because it's got some big screws around it. While I take the screws out of this, it does bear mention that um, um, one of the things that's likely to make this a more expensive option, interesting, that's two different types of screw. Uh, this one is made in the USA. Um, and um, I was thinking of this just as I was waffling into the microphone. That is something that will make it more expensive. So again, in terms of just raw cost alone, um, that is a fact that you might want to consider. Um, if you are very much of the opinion of, I want to support American manufacturing, then obviously made in the USA, good for them. Um, more manufacturing in the West is a good thing. Not that I have any beef with China or anything like that, but we should reduce our dependency on having so much manufactured in the same location. Anyway, those are those screws out. It looks like I'm going to have to take the handle off as well. That's got massive Allen keys on. Let me just find something for those. 
Whoop. Well, that's not terribly exciting if I'm brutally honest. I don't know what I expected, but it's got a massive brushed motor in there. Um, so you can see the brushes at the top there. That one going in and the other one on the other side. Um, and you can see the uh, the rotor in the middle with the windings in the center there. I can probably push that around if I give it a poke. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, uh, it's got a massive motor in the top there. That's obviously driving the fan that we can see through the bottom. Will that lift out actually? I think it might. Ah, that's not going to come out. Uh, that's not going to come out unless I actually disconnect the wires uh, because the the housing fits so snugly into this can uh, that it blocks the cable entirely. So I would have to actually uh, disconnect the wires, and I don't really want to do that because I can't recrimp these. Um, so yeah, I don't have anything to to deal with that. And I don't think it's actually worth doing, if I'm honest, because um, all we're going to see in there is just a big old fan, basically, which we can just see on through the bottom. Um, that is fundamentally it. So, yeah, that's it. That's all there is to it. I've also taken apart the other one here, just out of interest, because um, uh, the data vac was kind of boring on the inside, if I'm honest. This one's actually a little bit more interesting. Um, the build quality feels a little bit better, just in terms of just... Cable routing is a bit less how you're doing, in my opinion. But also, of course, this is a plastic construction. So if you drop this one onto a hard onto concrete, it's probably going to break. If you drop the data vac, it's a chunk of metal. I don't think it's going to break. Make of that what you will. Um, but yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. Again, it's got um, a uh, it's got a brushed motor in there connected to a big ass fan. The fan looks slightly smaller in this one, so I think this one probably does do. If you actually measured it, I would wager this one does actually have less airflow overall. But I don't think it actually matters for the intended application of these products. Uh, the speed controller is very straightforward. Um, there's a, there's a, um, a Y-class capacitor, I think, or X, the one that goes across the, the live and neutral. There's a fuse in there as well, and I don't remember seeing a fuse in the data vac. Uh, and there's another smoothing capacitor up here on the motor itself. But yeah, that's it. I thought you might find that interesting. So, uh, back to the rest of the video. Well, that's all i got for you today, folks. So, I will leave links to um, both of these exact ones that I purchased uh, in the description down below, they will be Amazon associate links. So if you buy, um, if you buy through those links, or if you buy anything on Amazon via those links, I get a small kickback, and that support helps me buy stuff so I can test stuff and give you my opinion on it. So thank you very much to all of you guys who use my associate links, and also thank you to my Patreons and my Twitch subscribers and everyone else who supports the channel for helping me be able to afford to buy equipment and test it out for you. I'm still kind of getting the hang of doing this. I hope you guys thought this was fairly informative. Um, so yeah, uh, the electric air dusters, I definitely recommend them. I'm sold. I didn't think I, I was skeptical going in. I am sold coming out. Um, so yeah, and if you've got any other recommendations for models that you uh, either recommend or have tried and didn't get on with, then stick your experiences down in the comments down below and then other people can see whether models are any good or not. So that's it. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.